All righty. All righty. We are Unbasic Black. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. We are going to, I had a whole introduction planned out, but I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I was sitting here, I had a whole introduction planned out, but I can't remember what I was going to say now. So, um, we are happy to be back in the new year. So, um, once again, happy new year. Happy new year. Unbasic Black, please visit us on all of our social media platforms. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and our website is www.unbasicblack.com. You can catch all the latest and greatest on any of our social social media platforms. So join us, like us, subscribe to us, and let's get to it. <laughs> right, friends? Which is actually a high five. <laughs> Who high fives like that? <laughs> Uh, nobody high fives like this. <laughs> but anyway, so today we are going to be talking about the 80s. Best decade ever. Right? <laughs> and just to give you an example of that, prior to recording this video, we were not in the best of moods. <laughs> but an instant shot of Billy Idol's Rebel Yell, and we are back, baby. <laughs> So it is, it's one of those things where you, you think about the 80s and you think about 80s music and it was just such an upbeat time. There were things going on in the world, but when it came to the music, right. it was just an upbeat time. Even their slow songs still had a level of peppiness to it. Oh, that's right in the video. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say? I, um, I was just agreeing. Yeah, it was um, even with the um, even <laughs> the slow music was um, in a way kind of deceptive because the the melodies were so good that you didn't realize how depressing some of the <laughs> the lyrics were. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, if you listen to the lyrics, some of them, yeah. But the music itself was really good. Okay, well, hopefully the video is coming out how it's supposed to. Right. So, alrighty, so we were talking about, my glasses are crooked. So we were talking about uh, the 80s and 80s music in particular. Yep. <laughs> I can't see you, so. Oh, so, okay, all right, I'll try to be more vocal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were talking about the 80s and 80s music. Greatest decade. Huh? The greatest decade. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far. Um, things just seem to, and I think part of that is because I, I was a child growing up in the 80s. So the that the culture or the atmosphere seemed so much lighter than it does nowadays. When I look at the environment that the kids have nowadays, the 80s by comparison just seemed so much lighter. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was a little bit older, so <clears throat> I was learning about um, the adult things, but yeah, it still seemed, I, and I try to think about it now, like, was it really better or right. was it better because I was a kid <laughs> exactly and that's what I think about too but even when you look at it from the perspective of a kid the things that the kids have to go through now and the things that they have to be concerned with even though they have so much more technology it seems they have to worry about a lot of a lot more than I remember having to worry about at the same age right Right. Yeah, I concur with that. Yeah. 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 Um, so like, it's a shame, really. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is because it, it the uh, the um 
like when the younger kids pick on particularly me, you know, like and you know, like my sons, like so, you know, back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, how was that? <laughs> like, well, it was quieter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> Except for that T Rex. <laughs> T Rex in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it wasn't the whole. It, I mean, there was stuff going on around the world, and and. You know, with the technology that we had at the time, there was still video of the stuff that was going because we had news and we knew what right. was going on, but but it just right. seemed that it wasn't so stressful. Right. And, I also think part of that is because we weren't so bombarded either. Because even though like news outlets they sensationalized and you know, like you said, we still had the news and like newspapers, but it was more so for people who wanted to see it. Whereas now you're co you're constantly bombarded, whether you want to see it or not. <laughs> you've got social media, you've got commercials, you've got all these different um, media and social media outlets that it's like a constant barrage of information. It's like information overload to the point where y you can't get away from it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And and and. I, I think one of the advantages that we had was that, like you were saying, that, that we weren't bombarded. But, I mean, mm -hmm. we can still do the same thing by turning off the TV. <laughs> exactly. And, and a lot of times that's what I end up doing because it's just too much. Right. Or log off the computer. Just read a book. <laughs> Unplug. <laughs> exactly. And it's, I think it's necessary because your mind needs a refresh. It needs to reboot. And... Right perfect segue one of the ways i do that is through music i listen to music especially when it when it comes to 80s music because for me it was such a light and airy time music wise that i just turn on some good upbeat 80s music and that's like a shot of b12 <laughs> right. yeah and, 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 and it seemed we were yeah. concerned i'm sorry that's okay it seemed we were concerned more with dancing than anything else. So a lot of the music was get up and dance. And, and you, when you look at the videos, the um, I mean, the, they, they dance in the videos now, but the dancing just seemed different. Like everybody participated in the dancing and not just you right. know, some scantily clad woman or or some saggy pants man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the quality of... Uh, video seems to be different too even though people seem to be spending more money on uh -huh. videos now but the quality of videos I think was much better in the 80s too not in terms of technology but in terms right. of production because they were like a full on you remember when Michael Jackson would premiere anything <laughs> and that's what they called it they called it the MTV video premiere <laughs> because you waited <laughs> right, it was an event, and you're sitting there in front of the TV, like it's coming on. Everybody, get ready! <laughs> exactly. You know, you'd have your friends over, you'd have your your snacks, and you would wait for this video premiere. And it's like you're waiting for the premiere of a music video, but you knew it was going to be a major production. And it was. <laughs> yeah, and it was, and it, I mean, just just so much upbeat, you know, up. Upbeatness? Is that a word? <laughs> now. Now. I'm going to say upbeatness. <laughs> and it was just so fun. You know, the music was just so fun. Um, I remember, so for me, I was more so into what they now call hair bands. Um, yeah. But heavy metal bands, you know, Guns N' Roses, Poison, you know, Cinderella, Bon Jovi, uh, Motley Crue, can't forget the crew, you know. And even that music, now some of the subject matter of those songs obviously were not particularly <laughs> But when those riffs started, oh, and you just, yeah, I can't even headbang anymore, but. <laughs> I don't even have the hair. <laughs> That's probably Playing too much in the eighties. <laughs> oh, I, I, 
I lost you. What now? Oh, I was just saying I rattled my brain too much during the early stages of development. <laughs> oh, and don't forget about the speakers that had to be right there. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so what, I know it's very difficult when you speak in terms of music, but what were some of your favorites? Duran Duran topped the list. Right? Yeah. Duran yes. Duran topped the list. That was my... And even to this day, my all-time favorite band group is Duran Duran. And then um, once we got to, once heavy metal came in, it was still Duran Duran, but mm -hmm. then it became, I think I liked them all equally. Motley Crue, Poison. I wish yeah. I had bought the White Snake album, but yeah. White Snake and Cinderella. Yes. Um, Def Leppard, which I got yeah. sick of them. <laughs> Because they were, cause they, were so they, they were so they were everywhere. Every time you turned on the radio or anything, <laughs> pour some sugar on me. <laughs> I don't want to pour any more sugar on you. I'm sugar on you. <laughs> that was good stuff, though. That was good yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the way. Duran, though, um, one of the things that I like the most about Duran Duran, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Duran Duran, though, um, one of the things that I like the most about Duran Duran, other than the obvious, because <laughs> they were so pretty and fresh faced, but other than the obvious, one of the things that I really liked about them was how catchy their songs were. You know, because no matter what, I mean, I, I would be doing homework and I'm, you know, the name is real when she dances on the sand, you know, and it would just get in your head and just right. go and go and go. Right. Yeah, they <laughs> and had a way of getting you know, into your soul. <laughs> huh? So they had a way of getting into your soul. Exactly. Exactly. And they've never left. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I still listen to Duran Duran. They weren't my like all time favorite, but they were really, really high up in the top ten for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the other things that I liked about them was that um, were their videos, and yeah. particularly for the Rio album, they went. They were in like some seriously nice locations. I think a lot of them were filmed in Sri Lanka, but still, right. you know, this they're just beautiful locations. Um, mm -hmm. And then when Seven and the Ragged Tiger came out, then they were they were all over Europe for that one. And then uh -huh. they got to do the um, View to a Kill for the James Bond film, View to a Kill. Um, yeah. And so they were in Paris for that. <laughs> That's great song and video. Bond. I miss my Bond. I know, right? Yeah. And, and, and that was the other thing that I really liked about it because, you know, they, they were European, but they, because of their videos, they exposed you to so many different places in the world. And me, I, I, I think I'm, I was a pirate in a past life, so I've always loved to explore and go new places and have adventures and watching their videos, all the different um, cinematography that they have, all the different locations that they filmed at. It was just an opportunity to kind of go out and see the world at 10. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, um, just kind of dig digressing a little bit about the 80s, is that uh, I will say we were trying to figure out who we were. So right. everything was an experiment. So, the, of course, the clothes. <laughs> the clothes were extremely <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, fun, own. <laughs> we must own up to it. We are responsible. <laughs> that cheese aquanet hair. <laughs> and what was so bad about that in the eighties? Even black people were trying to do it. <laughs> Like, I want Aquanet, too! <laughs> and you're just be like... <laughs> Woo! Puffy skis! Huh? You remember Patti LaBelle with, um... Well, <laughs> Patti LaBelle in the 80s. Her hair no, was never... She, 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 she 
was standing on her waxed, starched, Patty LaBelle hair. <laughs> but that's kind of what made it so fun. It was so over the top and it was so outrageous where it's like, we've come here to entertain you and just have fun. Right. Nowadays, it's either about sex or somebody trying to send you a message of some sort. It's like, I live in the real world. I don't need reality in my entertainment. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to enjoy. <laughs> like, uh, staples, like we started out talking about Billy Idol and Rebel Yell. Right. Uh, you know, for like dances and things like that, Billy Idol was a, a staple. <laughs> money, money. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You talk about somebody dancing at the school dance every Friday night. <laughs> right? Anytime money money came on, everybody hit the dance floor. <laughs> hey mother Evans. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably was part of the reason it gave us a chance to cuss. <laughs> hey mother, get leg, get beep. <laughs> a lot of beeping. <laughs> Now's my chance to be bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so and there are there are a few, there are a few. I mean Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, so, but the majority of the eighties though, I did listen to hair bands. I didn't listen to a lot of R and B. Uh-huh. Um, but I was aware of it and some of it I did like like New Edition, Bobby Brown. Um who else? Um, cameo. <laughs> you remember? Have, have you seen that Word Up video? Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> it still cracks me up because I'm like, it yeah, takes a cup. He's wearing the cup. Outfit. That's the way he's wearing the cup, right? That is correct. A bright, shiny cup. I think it's red. Right, the shorts were red. I was like, you're scaring people. <laughs> but and the high top fade. Uh-huh. The high top fade. Yeah, high top fade. Kid and play. Can't mention high top fade without kid and play. Right. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a few, but I would not, I, I didn't own any of their music except for New Edition. Uh-huh. And, um, I, I, I didn't listen to it as regularly as I listen to my hair bands. Right, right. So who are your favorites in general? Guns Roses burst on the scene. Yeah, yeah. And they literally changed the face of heavy metal hair band music. <laughs> Which is sad because there were heavy metal hair band people from the early 80s that were still playing, but it's something about Exactly, and and when Slash, yeah, because I, I remember, like it was yesterday, the first time I ever heard that song. Yeah. Because it came on MTV, and you know, it starts out with that riff. And it was like, hmm, what now, what's this? Because it didn't sound like the classic hair band music, you know, it didn't sound like the, um, you know, like that higher pitched, like type of music, it started out and it, it got your attention. Right. <laughs> it got your attention right out the block. And then when Axel started to sing, it was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Right. <laughs> that was good stuff. I will never forget that. You can't. <laughs> Yep, and that Welcome to the Jungle video, every time it came on, you could not help but watch it. <laughs> now, that was one I didn't mind watching all the time. I got sick of pouring some sugar on me like nobody's business, though. <laughs> yes, got sick of that. So, in fact, I, I still kind of get sick of it because it comes on now because, you know, the 80s music had um, made a resurgence, a reemergence. Uh-huh. And um, they play that song a lot on the 80s station that I listen to. Uh-huh. That it, I can just wait and it, it'll be on. <laughs> if I wanted to hear it, I just wait. It will be on again. I'm like, will you please stop saying this? You know how much music they had in the 80s? 
<laughs> you don't have to just play that when you want to say we're playing 80s music. <laughs> right. You know what I think some people forget, though, is that What's country that? music was really big in the 80s. I remember it particularly in the early 80s, like up until maybe like 83. Uh -huh. But like Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton ruled You know charts. what? Right. You're right. Because I remember uh, there was a Kenny, a couple of Kenny Rogers songs, like the the one from The Gambler. Mm -hmm. That was 80s, wasn't it? Or was that 70s? I think it bled into the 80s. Yeah, because I remember that song and I remember another song that he did. I think it was called Lady. Yep, which was written by Lionel Richie, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there were quite a few, and and I do know that Dolly Parton was really, really popular during that time. I didn't listen to country music at all, so I really don't know. Uh, but I know was it like late '80s into the '90s, I believe it was when um, like the con the country music started to become more contemporary as well. So it's like they kind of traded in like the cowboy or cowgirl skirts and things like that to more contemporary fashions with cowboy boots. So you knew it was yeah, still that was element of country. <laughs> right. I think that was more. Um, it started in the '90s. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I do remember, um, I, I do remember seeing some things, and I'm like, well, they don't look like a country musician, you know? They don't look like a country artist, like Shania Twain or something, you know? It's like they don't look like country artists that right. we remembered seeing, like Patsy Cline and all of these people, you know? Right. right. They have more contemporary, more modern um, style. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? Um, um, so Guns N' Roses was the only band you liked during the 80s, or were there some other ones? Are you nuts? <laughs> no, I all I listened to was hair bands. So uh, Poison, you know, Def Leppard, Dokken, Megadeth, Metallica, Skid Row. Oh, you I know? <laughs> yeah, I could, I, Warrant, <laughs> I could go on. I, I, Cinderella, you know, there were a couple. My ultimate during the the first beginnings of the 80s was Poison. That was like ultimate. Poison was, they were my, in fact, I still like Poison and listen to Poison. And I've introduced my girls to Poison. Like, here, you guys gotta hear this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta hear this. This is like standard. This mm -hmm. new edition, those are standards. You gotta listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So my music collection is so eclectic that there literally is everything in there but right. yeah so as far as the 80s is concerned yeah it was all hair bands <laughs> all hair bands and it started with poison uh -huh. talk to me and it, and you know what's weird about that too because when i think about how young i was <laughs> I, it just the the music was so great that i didn't really think about the message behind it and what it meant Right, and that's what I was saying earlier, is that the, the that was just the thing about the 80s music, is that once mm -hmm. you finally stop listening to the melody, and you start like <laughs> looking at the lyrics, then you're like, wait a minute. Exactly. <laughs> well, I listening to that guy 10 years old. <laughs> what was I listening to? Because I think about that now, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that that? Girls, Girls, Girls album? Exactly, especially yeah, anything Motley Crue. <laughs> Even their music videos were not child friendly, but I definitely would watch them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but their songs weren't raunchy, but yeah, I mean, just, 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 just was an homage to strippers. <laughs> it just didn't seem to have the same connotation that it would have now. Because right. look at the videos now, though, especially like that Girls, Girls, Girls video, it is a little difficult to watch. Because <laughs> I watch it and I'm like, this is such exploitation. <laughs> but then again, shake your thing, girl. <laughs> well, girls, but I was always fascinated by them. You were ahead of the game, huh? I said, I was always, they picked like the, the best strippers on the planet to do these videos <laughs> because the way they like went up and down the whole thing. magic city <laughs> you know, I'm just how strong they were strong they were and, and how much core strength they had because they lifted themselves and they and they had such control 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I think that takes a level of athleticism. Yeah. You know, I, I have no problem with them being strippers. None whatsoever. As long as they're taking care of themselves, respecting themselves, and doing things on their own terms and not some pimp or sex trafficking situation, I, hey, knock yourself out because it does. It takes a lot of core strength. Because you remember um, during the early 2000s when everybody wanted a stripper pole because it, it yeah. good exercise. <laughs> Remember they had classes like stripper fitness or pole, pole fitness or something because that's not a thing to do. And in that girls, girls, girls video, like you said, they got the best strippers on the planet. <laughs> Tell me a story. You know the one I mean. Ah, <laughs> oh, good stuff. <laughs> Gotta I love like the, the ending of, of, of the song where it's like, um, Hey, Tommy, check that out, man. Where, Vince? Where? Right there. Hey. <laughs> and that's when I start to cringe a little bit. <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, not exactly respecting women. <laughs> However, I put that bad boy around because I'm like, hey, Angel, check out that dude right there. Where, man? Where? Right there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good topic for later because women can be a hundred times worse than men when it comes to exploitation. <laughs> so, no, we'll be talking about that. <laughs> I'm write that down. Gender, gender reversals and how men and women can be just as bad. <laughs> a good topic, but um, yeah. So, do um, you know why? Um, and I don't know if this would be relevant in the conversation, but do you know why in particular it was heavy metal that appealed to you more so than any other genre? Was that, was that just because of uh, school or, or your level of exposure because of how young you were? Yeah, I can honestly say um, I, I never thought about it when I was a kid, but um, if I had to think of something now, mm -hmm. I would think it was the hair. Okay. Okay. I absolutely loved long hair. Anyway, I, I loved long hair anyway. And even when I was younger, you know, playing with Barbies and things like that, I would love to comb their hair. And they were just like big Barbie dolls. <laughs> because they were so pretty, too. They were just like big Barbie dolls. And I, and I think that was the initial appeal. Because, I, you know, I, I would hang out with you and listen to your stuff. And you're listening to Duran Duran and Madonna and Cyndi Lauper, which I loved all of that stuff, too. Still listen to all of that. Right. But it was just something about the hair bands that caught my attention. And I'm I'm pretty sure it was the hair. I'm like, oh, okay. they've great hair. Do you see that? A mop of hair and like Poison in particular, again, they were like big Barbie dolls because they wore full makeup. Right. And that was something that appealed to me. I was like, they're just so pretty, <laughs> you know. And I, and on top of them being so pretty, their music was pretty catchy. <laughs> That's a pretty catchy music. I just didn't realize I was so young listening to them. That's a good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because when you flash forward to now, I'm like, that was eighty what five when Talk Dirty to Me came out, and I was like, man, I was like. I was like eight, nine, ten, something. Don't tell my age, but you know, I was like somewhere around there, and I'm listening to this music. But yeah, I, I want to say eighty-seven. Huh? I want to say eighty-seven. Oh, it was it that late? Oh, okay, eighty-seven. Yeah. Unbasic Black, please visit us on all of our social media platforms: um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and our website is www.unbasicblack.com.